All right, guys, welcome to CFR 105. Um, this is week one. I'm your instructor. My name is Frank Griffiths. Uh, I've been teaching at UAT since 2013 in one capacity or another. Uh, typically, I teach the 101 forensics class, uh, 105. In the past, we've had 106, although I think that may be defunct now. Um, 210, 225, and uh, randomly a, a couple of 400 level classes. Um, I've been doing computer forensics since about 2009 uh, for a municipal police department. I was with Scottsdale PD in, in, in here in Arizona for about 12 years and, uh, and then about two and a half years as a special agent for the Attorney General's office. And um, the last six or so years of my career was done in uh, cyber crimes, computer investigations, and uh, specifically as a computer forensic examiner. Uh, my certification, certification, my certification is through um, IASIS, which is the um, International Association of Computer Investigative Specialists, IASIS. Um, they um, certify mostly law enforcement, uh, but they also certify people in the in the private sector now. Um, and uh, anyway, it's it's a fairly respectable international organization for computer forensics. Um, I'm also, uh, I'm, a, I'm a native here in Arizona. I'm in, I'm in the negative seven GMT time zone. If you need to get a hold of me, um, let's see what else about me. I've got six kids. My youngest is 12. My oldest is married. Um, and I got a few kids here at home still going to high school and college and stuff like that. So anyway, um, enough about me. Let's get into week one here. We're going to talk about number systems. In 105, it's really important that you have the ability to kind of read the matrix a little bit. You, when we get into uh, looking at hex view, um, you don't really need to know binary per se, although there will be times when it will be important to understand the concept of binary because we will sometimes be decoding packed bytes and while the bytes are written in hexadecimal you have to understand what that translates to into binary because there are different flags and markers in binary um, anyway we'll explain all of that let's start really simply though just talking about a uh, a number system that you're familiar with uh, the number the counting system that you've learned since you were five years old in kindergarten is what we would call base 10 or the decimal counting system and that's where the ones column up here um, is is a value of 0 through 9 and if you uh, because it's the ones column uh, that would be 10 to the 0 and so you can see I've got this little chart up here and it corresponds if you look right under the ones column straight down you have 10 to the 0 well any number to the 0 quick math refresher is one uh, and so the ones column is always going to be the first column in base 10 counting uh, now it can have a value of 0 through 9 and so if I have a value in this ones column over here then I multiply that number times the value of the column in this case it's 1 and that's the value so if I have the number 9 and just the number 9, I multiply it by 1 because it's in the 1's column and it gives me the value of 9. Well, we don't go through all of that mentally, right? We just see the number 9 and we know that's a value of 9. Or we see the number 5 and we know it's a value of, of, of 5. But really what we're doing is saying in that 1's column we're multiplying it by 1 and that's how we know that it's that number. Now, we jump one column to the left and we go to the 10's column which is uh, 10 to the one, all right. So any exponent times or any number to the exponent of one is that number itself. So the tens column uh, means we're going to take a digit in base 10, 0 through 9, and that's not a coincidence that it's 0 through 9, that there's 10 values there that are available to us in base 10. Um, and so uh, we have, uh, a, a, again, a value of 0 through 9 in there, but we multiply it by the placeholder there for that column, which is 10, or the value of that column. So if it was a 2 there, we would multiply that value times 2, and we would come up with our, times 10, and we would, we would come up with the number 20. Right, two times ten is twenty, and so and then if this one was a nine, then we would say, okay, um, 
we'd have the number 29. Now, in the example here, so just so I don't confuse you, I guess I probably should have used the example that's on screen here. Um, we have the number, the decimal number, 987,543, okay? And that's... Um, that's just a random number I picked just to illustrate uh, the concept here. So in the ones column, we have the numeral three. So we have three times one, and that gives us, pardon me, the value of three, okay? And and that's that's how you, you would quantify that. Uh, in the next column over, we have the value of four, but that's not really a value of four, that's a value of 40 right? Uh, because we go 4 times 10, 40. This next value over isn't really a 5, it's 500, because we're doing 5 times 100, because that's that's the column of, of 10 to the second power. 10 to the third power, 10 to the fourth power, 10 to the fifth power. Uh, and so here, you can see very... Um, uh, laboriously, we've taken a number that you're very familiar with, 987,543, and broken it down into its actual values by column. Uh, and, and so you can see in the first column over here, 9 times 10 to the 5 is 900,000. 8 times 10 to the 4 is 80,000. 3 times 10, <clears throat> excuse me, 7 times 10 to the third power is 7,000 and so forth. And then you add all those columns up and that gives you your total value. All right, so again, you're wondering, we know this, we, this is not rocket science. We've been doing this since we were, you know, basically in elementary school. Okay, I, just a refresher because now we're gonna jump into uh, base two counting and, it, and it'd be really helpful if you had that sort of, uh, that uh, foundation, that refresher. All right, so base two, same concept, right? We've got these columns. Each column represents a power of two this time instead of a power of 10. Binary means two, by two, base two. And so uh, you have a, va again, you have a value of zero or one. So we have two values available to us. And each column is therefore a value of a power of two. Okay, an exponent of two. So Two to the zero is always one, so that's our ones column over here on the far right. Two to the one is always going to be your two, is the same number. So instead of a tens column and from decimal or from base 10, it's the twos column. So any number that we have here, we're gonna multiply by two. Any number we have here, we're gonna multiply by four. Any number we have here, we're gonna multiply by uh, eight. Any number we have here, we're gonna multiply by 16 and so forth, okay, all the way up. Now, this is a really common notation one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, eight, um, eight digits in a binary is called a byte. One digit is called a bit, right? So, I mean, you know this, if you have had anything, any awareness of digital technology, computers, you've heard of binary, you know what that is. Zeros or ones, it's either on or it's off, right? It's a value of zero or it's a value of one. So I should say it's off or it's on. Um, and, and then we can multiply that value of 0 or 1 times the column of its exponent. So here's again a random binary number I just picked because it looks cool. 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, right? Um, and, and just to kind of illustrate again what this is, 0 times 1 is 0. 1 times 2 is 2. 0 times 4 is 0, 1 times 8 is 8, and as you can see, we're just adding it up. 0 times 16 is 0, 1 times 32 is 32, 0 times 64 is 0, and 1 times 128 is 128. And so you take all of those bits, and you add them up, and you have a value, a byte of decimal value 170. So that's how you would convert binary to decimal, is to take your zeros and ones, multiply them times the corresponding column of their base two value, okay? So, whenever you're gonna start to convert um, 
a decimal number to a binary number or vice versa, always write out your column here, your, your column values first. It's always going to be 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128. Um, I'll let you guess what the next column value is. It is, you're right, um, 256. So that's, that's a byte and it's eight bits and those are the column values for each bit in the byte and that's how we would do um, binary so the maximum value for a binary sequence is 255 right because it's got a, a total of 256 values possible but these numbers all added up these numbers here, 128, 64, 32, 16, 8, 4, 2, and 1 add up to 255. Wait, but shouldn't there be 256 values? Yes, of course there is. Don't forget 0. So 0 to 255 is our first byte of information. Okay, our second byte starts with 256. Okay, so that's kind of hopefully that's clicking for you. Hope that's making a little bit of sense. Um, now we're going to take it a next further a step further and we're going to look at base 16 or hexadecimal and that's what if you took 101 with me uh, a semester ago five weeks ago uh, we started looking at the hex view um, uh, of, of files and we started digging in just a little bit to the idea that these bytes um, are coded they're encoded they mean certain things obviously and and so now we're going to start digging down a little bit more and drilling down a little deeper into what some of the codes are for these byte sequences in the file system right so I the file system forensics that's what 105 is so we're going to begin to decode the file system just a little bit for you uh, okay so let's take a look at base 16 base 16 is hexadecimal I'm going to get my face out of the way here whoops 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 ah, ah, ah. oops okay pull myself together here all right hexadecimal gets a little bit more complicated the same concepts exactly the same it doesn't change at all in concept um, we have a ones column and then we have 16 to the 1 as the next column. Well, 16 to the 1 is a 16s column, right? So instead of counting by 10s or by 2s, we're now counting by 16s. Okay, and then the next column is the 256 column, and the next column after that is the 4096 column, and then the next column after that is the 63536 column, and I generally don't go any bigger than that. You don't really have to. I mean, you do sometimes, but conceptually, as long as you understand the idea that we're going base 16, 16 to the 0, 16 to the 1, 16 to the 2, and 16 to the 3, um, I think we're going to be good if you can grasp that concept. Okay, so we also, just as in decimal, right, when we had each each column was a base, uh, base 10, uh, and you also had 10 values available, 0 through 9, and just like in binary, where each each column was base 2, so 2 to an exponent, and there were two values available per each column, 0 and 1. Same thing is true with base 16. Uh, each column, of course, as we just discussed, is a uh, exponent of 16, but and each column can have 16 values assigned to it, uh, 0 through 15, right? So, um, the problem is, is you've only got one digit to write the um, the value of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, which is easy because those just take up one digit in our Arabic numeral system. Uh, but as soon as you get to 10, 10 is a, is a single value in base 16, but it requires two digits in, in our Arabic writing system. And so the problem with that is, is that uh, in, in hexadecimal, you can only... You only get the one column for values 0 through 15. So instead of trying to put 11, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 all in one column, because that, that doesn't make sense, um, we just substitute the letters uh, A, B, C, D, E, and F for the values 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay, so um, 10 is, is the letter A. Uh, 11 is B, 12 is C, 
13 is D, 14 is E, and 15 is F. So you will have in hexadecimal the numerals 0 through F. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, A, B, C, D, E, F. And that gives us 16 values, 0 through 15 conceptually. And so that's really important. Um, so um, if that makes sense to you, we'll move on and we will go to uh, decoding a hexadecimal value. In this example up here, we've got AA. Okay, so we've got a byte represented as AA, and then the other three bytes next to it are 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Okay, so AA is actually um, a 10 in the 1's column and a 10 in the 16's column. And, and so the way you would add that up quite simply is A times 16 plus A times 1. Okay, and, and, and so you add those two columns together just like we did in the previous examples, right? We added up all the columns, 128 plus 32 plus 0 plus 2 is, gives us a value of 170. Same thing in base 16. We're going to add up the two columns that we're concerned about, the AA, uh, not Alcoholics Anonymous, although after doing base 16 for long enough, you may need to join Alcoholics Anonymous. Um, 160 plus 10, or... 16 times, is that, that's not, oh yeah, I'm sorry, uh, 10 times 16, I got it, I'm with, see, I need, this is just polar pop, non-alcoholic beverage, I promise, okay, so, uh, 16 times 10 plus 16 times 1, I mean, good grief, can I, I, maybe I am drunk, maybe that's the problem. A is 10, 10 times 16 is 160, A is 10, 10 times 1 is 10, so you have 160 plus 10, 170. Now that I've confused everybody thoroughly, let's look at another example. Let's imagine that instead of AA, that was FF, or it was 15 in the 16's column and 15 in the 1's column, so you'd be 15 times 16, which is 240, plus 15 times 1, which is 15, which gives us a value of 255 total, okay? So, um, there you go. Yes, uh, FF is 255. That's the highest value that you can have for any byte. Uh, and so, um, often when they wipe a drive, they'll replace it with all Fs or all zeros. Um, just to fill those bytes with a random number, FF, you'll often see that. So um, let's go a little bit more complicated. Let's do C0. Um, C0 is, uh, C is the value, let's see if A is 10, B is 11, C must be 12. Okay, so 12 times 16 plus 0 times 1 is what's 12 times 16 192 plus 0 times 1 which is 0 gives us a value of 192 in decimal so that's how we convert from hexadecimal to decimal um, and then the last example we have right over here is the idea of uh, two bytes we're going to add two bytes together well it's really just the same same way we did it with binary same way we do it with decimal we're just going to add all those columns together. So 1 times the base uh, 4, or the, the 16 to the 4th column, right, that, I'm sorry, 16 to the 3rd, 16 to the 3rd is the column we're in. So if we have 1, 0, 0, 0, right, or 1, 0, 0, 0, this is to the 0, to the 1, to the 2, to the 3, 16 to the 3, 16 to the 3 is 4096, okay, so if we have 1 times 4096, and then all zeros after that, the value 1, this is not, people will sometimes say, hey, the hex 10 0, 10 0 0, that's not 10 0 0, that's 1 0, hex 1 0, hex 0 0, gives us a value of in decimal, 4,096. All right, I hope that is now clear as mud as well. 
Let's take a look at ASCII. This is an ASCII chart. Um, ASCII, what does it stand for? It's like the uh, American Standardized Character something. ASCII 2. Uh, uh, it's it's basically just a standardized character chart of what values on your keyboard are represented by what decimal value and by what hexadecimal value. So when the computer is actually reading in binary, and and it really is reading in binary, we just have that this intermediate stage of hexadecimal for our benefit, right? Because um, it's much easier for us as human beings to read hexadecimal than it is binary. Why don't we just do it in decimal? Well, for a couple of reasons, probably. Number one, decimal is not as conducive to binary. It doesn't translate as easily because base 16 is actually um, harmonious with base 2. Base 10 is not. Uh, and also because you can compact a larger amount of numbers into fewer digits using base 16 than you can base 10. Anyway, uh, so if I wanted to write the letter A, right, um, the typographical character A, uh, the computer doesn't see an A. What it sees is the value, uh, let me see, um, where is it? Uh, right up there, number, the hexadecimal value 41, right? And so if I wanted to write the character A, it's hexadecimal value 41. It's a decimal value 65. I don't think, I don't know why that is ever important. It might be to somebody it's not to me but knowing that a is hexadecimal 41 could come in handy in fact knowing your alphabet and I'm not ever going to ask you to memorize that but if you were to memorize uh, anything in hexadecimal knowing which characters correspond to which hex value might be might be useful it won't be for this class I mean it it's not you're not gonna be tested on it uh, you, you might be asked to figure it out in fact, I'm sure at some point you'll be asked to convert a hex value to a decimal value and then look it up on the ASCII chart and tell me what letter it is. You're going to have to, in fact, this week there's an assignment due where you have to do some, some translating from binary to hex and then come in here and look up at the hexadecimal and see um, what, what the code, decode the binary uh, text value. All right, so that's how you would do that. Um, so uh, the hex value, why is the hex value uh, 41 actually 65? Why is that? Well, 1 times 16 gives us a value of 16. And 4, is that right? No, I'm sorry. 1 times 1 gives us a value of 16. See, I'm stupid. What am I doing teaching this class? Why am I even here? 1 times 1 is 1. So that gives us a value of 1, and 4 times 16 is 64, right? So 64 plus 1 is 65. Does that make sense? Okay. And same thing here. 4 times 16 is 64, plus 2 is 66. And, and so you can go all the way down the list doing that. 4 times 16 is 64, plus 15 is 79. That's O, right? And then you'll notice as you count, you know, it, it, just like counting numerically by the tens column, it goes 4, 9, and then it doesn't go 4, 10. It goes 4, A, 4, 11, 4, C, 4, D, 4, E, 4, F, and then it rolls to the next 16s column, 5, 5, 0, 5, 1, 5, 2. All right, anyway, just rambling at this point. So here's a cutout of... Um, uh, a master boot record from a Windows machine, uh, presumably. Uh, maybe it's not, but it looks like it is. Yeah, probably a Windows machine. And um, and the reason I think that uh, is, if my first clue is I'm, I'm looking at the highlighted blue area. That's the master partition table of, a, of an NTFS file system or a Windows-based file system, uh, master partition table system. Um, and you'll start to see some things here that you, you will begin to recognize, like uh, these, the first 16 bytes of this master partition table that starts here with 8-0, and then the next one in the sequence is 2-0, and the next one is 2-1, not 21, 2-1, 0-0-0-7, D-D-1-E, all the way over here to 0-F. So those first 16 bytes those first 16 bytes um, represent the first partition on disk. The next 16 bytes, starting with 00DD and so forth, and ending over here at 1D, 
are the next represent the second partition on the disk. Uh, and then you can see there's another uh, 32 bytes here that are all zeros. That means that there are no other partitions on the disk, uh, at least not according to this partition schema. Uh, so we've got two partitions on disk. The first one starts here with 80. The next one starts down here with 00. We're going to get into this not today, but that's how you begin to recognize uh, some things here in the master partition table. I know, for example, that this byte, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, the fifth byte in is a code for the file system, and I know that 07 is the code for NTFS. How do I know that? Because I work almost exclusively with NTFS file systems in my six years uh, doing computer forensics, and so I'm just very familiar to see that 07 is the NTFS file system. And then you've got some other grouped bytes here that tell you where the partition starts and how many clusters it is long, and so we'll get into that, uh, but not today. All right, that's all I got for you. I hope this was useful. Uh, welcome to CFR 105 uh, File System Forensics, and you've just done Converting Number Systems Basic 105. Hope that was helpful.